Welcome to Optily Radio, your regular 30-minute dose of everything you need to accelerate your e-commerce marketing success. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Optily Radio, the show that brings in the experts from across marketing and e-commerce to help you accelerate your online business. Today's guest is Nora Seduth. Nora is the co-founder and CRO of Hello Audio, a company that turns your content into private audio feeds that your customers can listen to anytime, anywhere. She is a leading marketing and conversion strategist who has helped businesses sell over $500 million worth of products and services online. She's also designed several courses and coaching and certification programs that have generated millions more. And from the Optoly team today, we have Brendan Hughes joining us. In addition to being our CEO, Brendan has authored a book on helping e-commerce companies grow through digital marketing and has worked with a variety of businesses and helping them scale through online strategies. Welcome to the show, Nora and Brendan. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Hi, Nora. Great to see you. It's nice to see you too. Cool. So why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, how it is you came into the world of marketing and the road that led you to Hello Audio. I took probably that more traditional path to success, right? I I have a handful of degrees, college degrees. I started in the tech space, actually, before tech was really cool, Um, probably dating myself a bit. But I was one of very few women that went and did my bachelor's in computer science. So that was was a long time ago, Um, but fell in love with technology. And what really I love the most was how people interact with technology and how technology could be a tool to, uh, you know, a greater means. And so as I, you know, went through, got my MBA, did, you know, did some things, went, started climbing that corporate ladder, um, I, I couldn't get away from technology and how technology can benefit the end user. And so just got really curious and passionate, you know, as one does, uh, as you start to research and start to investigate. And I, I started to really fall in love with marketing technology and how we could use marketing automations and, and websites. And, you know, the new thing at the time that was, you know, was just coming out was click funnels and funnels. So I ended up leaving my corporate job and started my own marketing agency, grew that to a couple of, you know, multiple six figures in less than nine months. Uh, Russell found out what I was doing. I got a message from Russell and said, hey, would you be willing to shut down your agency and come and, and build our new version of our certified partner program for ClickFunnels? And so, you know, I had been using ClickFunnels. It was new prior to that. You know, everyone was using WordPress. I was having a lot of success, getting clients a lot of success with it. And so it was an opportunity. And obviously with Russell, right, you don't you don't say no. It was just such an amazing opportunity. And so, you know, through my time with Russell and, and at ClickFunnels, I probably reviewed, you know, thousands of marketing campaigns, um, got to see the patterns as, as an engineer would, right, as someone who's is going through computer, computer scientists, we we see patterns, we see um, formulas, we see kind of those things that make things successful. And one of the folks I, I actually had met who was also running an online business were Derek and Lindsay Padilla. They were helping teachers, you know, create online businesses and teach online because they're former community college professors and they had done that successfully. And, you know, Derek was amazing at, he's very tech uh, tech savvy, and he kind of had this idea, you know, hey, what if we used private podcasts to help our students be more successful and help it make it, you know, make it easier to help consume courses. So kind of the in the original product name was podcast your course, right? So we're kind of changing what it meant to be a podcaster, you know, using private podcasts to be able to, to uh, listen to your premium content. So that's kind of how Hello Audio itself was born. It was originally podcast your course. And since then, we have, you know, gosh, so many different use cases for how people are now using private podcasts for marketing, for fulfillment, for internal communications, uh, it's really exploded. Uh, yeah, if, if I can maybe step you back, Nora, because you know you've been in the industry um, by your own admission for um, several decades. Just in terms of the journey, you've seen kind of brands and 
uh, going on in terms of understanding their funnels and understanding kind of, you know, attribution and those topics like, you know, because it's changed dramatically, right? Um, so, so what have you seen? What's, what's, what's been happening and where do you think we are? Are we better off now or are we worse off than we were 10 years ago? You know, I look at the industry and how easy it was back in the day. You know, you could throw up a Facebook ad, you could throw up a Google ad, right? Traffic was so much easier than I think it is today. So I think, you know, in terms of what I see now, businesses struggle more today to get leads um, than, than it was just so much easier back in the day. I think the other thing that, you know, we've matured, our audiences have matured. I think there's just so much evolution that has happened in this online space that, you know, consumers are more savvy, consumers have higher expectations, which I actually think is a really, really good thing because it forces everyone that's creating info products or services and, you know, just, you know, even physical products to really rise, um, rise to that occasion and, and kind of step things up, which I love to see. I think that's a, that's an amazing thing for all of us, even though I do, I do understand that it makes, you know, conversions and lead gen a little bit more challenging, but I, you know, I, people are still being successful and it, it does depend on what space you're in, right? Like the make money online space, like, you know, that's, it's still there, right? You have maybe uh, less schemers and dreamers than than maybe we have in in years past, but it goes to show how much has been purchased online and how much we've relied on the online services, online products, online just buying our, our patterns, our behavior in general has has evolved, and I think it's a it's a really good thing. Marketing is definitely more challenging than it used to be. I think I think before, if you had a good product or you had a good message, it was a lot easier to sell. Um, but I do think we'll start to see the traffic situation even out a bit more. There'll be other opportunities to get in front of folks. And it just really helps separate the the businesses who can speak uh, to their, their big promise and, and really have great messaging. Maybe, I guess, the key question then for a lot of our listeners while they're listening to a podcast um, might not really be thinking about, you know, where audio fits for them um in their brand building so is it something that they should invest in if they're not already what so why why audio and um, where does it fit for maybe more consumer focused brands as well as maybe b2b brands what we're seeing now is that over 80 percent of people across the globe in in major metropolitan areas are using or are consuming data audio on their phones they're consuming audio specifically on their phones not just video but audio and if we think about the power of audio to reach people it really helps unlock all of the hours of the day we're not sitting here right at this screen um, and we've had a lot of screens time over the last couple of years with the pandemic. And, you know, we start to see if you'll, you'll notice some of the messaging for big brands is it's a lot of adventure. It's a lot of get out and do stuff. It's a lot of make memories because as we are trying to come out of the, you know, the other side of this pandemic, they're trying to get people away from their screens. And, you know, we saw the big, huge trends of audio, even through the pandemic with Clubhouse, we've seen um, acquisitions from Spotify. I mean, there's a lot of big brands that have been investing in audio. And, and there's there's a reason for that is because audio helps you really reach your audience. It, it helps fit into those little pockets of the day where, you know, we still want to consume content, but we're not going to sit down and watch an entire webinar. We, you know, and podcasts are amazing. And, and through whatever your favorite podcast app is, whatever you're listening to this on, right, you can turn off your screen, stick your phone in your pocket and just kind of go about your day. So it's kind of more seamlessly integrating more into someone's day to day life. So uh, taking a little step back, can you explain the difference between a public podcast and a private podcast? Typical formats for public podcasts are, you know, an interview or, you know, everyone has kind of different different versions of a public podcast, but public podcasts are available for everyone. They're open to the general public. Anyone can subscribe. And as a podcast owner, while you get data, it's fairly limited in terms of you can see maybe what episodes were downloaded the most, maybe what um, operating system or what device, you know, people were where they were at in the world, depending on if you're using Chartable or, you know, other other stats that, you know, whatever you're looking at. But you don't necessarily who, see who exactly is listening and what they're listening or when they're listening. So the biggest thing with private and public podcasts, or the one of the one of the biggest differences is with private podcasts, they feel they play in the 
same podcast apps that you're already used to, but you can put premium gated content in it, which means you get to control who gets access to that podcast and for how long. Public podcast links are generic, right? I can subscribe, that link is the same for everyone. With, with private podcasts, you could actually create an access link that's tied to that unique users or that unique listener's email address. That means when that person gets that, you know, the, you're, you know exactly who's getting access to it, you know who's listening, and you can actually see when that person is listening on a much more granular level than you can with public podcasts. So now that gives you more data, more insights, more opportunity to follow up, having a more relevant conversation, it's, it is very, very different. And so as we think of shows and in, in public podcasts, now as we start to use private podcasts, we can think that we can podcast a whole bunch of different types of content. And I guess the other big thing about the difference between public and private that I want to make sure I bring up is that you can actually create different feeds, meaning you can tailor your delivery. With, with public podcasts, you can't. It's everyone gets the same episode at the same time, right? It's not tailored by a specific listener. But with private podcasts, you could actually tailor your release schedule based on the individual listener. More and more brands are you know, segmenting their customer base, either based on the product they're interested in or some demographics or, or buying behaviors. Um, I'm guessing the use cases are where there's a subscription product um, or you've mentioned online courses. What, what are the kind of most typical use cases where you're seeing people like, for example, drip feeding content? So it's day zero and you get a certain feed or, you know, in your podcast app, which is amazing, right? So I get a personalized um, podcast from a brand directly targeted at me because I'm in a certain segment. I bought a certain product. So yeah, what are there are there some examples that you've seen that are really powerful and that really work really well? They kind of break down into three buckets. The first bucket is there's examples I'll give you that are in marketing, you know, how to attract and convert leads. The second bucket is more delivery and fulfillment. And then I would say the third bucket is more internal kind of communication. So a couple of examples that are really common in a marketing standpoint is now you'll start, you're starting to see audio lead magnets. So for a lot of folks like that, you know, the PDF, I know I have a graveyard of PDFs on multiple computers, multiple hard drives, right? It's PDFs are great, but you know, if people download it and what's the first thing people will typically say, I'll get to that later, right? It ends up in that downloads folder and, and we don't engage. And quite frankly, it's a lot more difficult as we talk about the, uh, you know, connection, the, the connection economy. It's hard to make a connection with someone over a PDF, right? Compare that to, sure, you know, you have an amazing PDF you spent a lot of time on, but what if you had an accompanying audio series that walked people through that PDF or gave you, you know, insights? on the most common mistakes that people make when they use this PDF or examples or success stories. Now you're able with that audio connection, audio is more intimate, right? You're able to kind of hear more of the owner's voice and the brand voice. All of a sudden now you're making a lot better connections with that lead magnet, which ultimately leads to higher conversion. So we see a lot of things on the audio lead magnet side. Also, you know, traditional marketing, you think about launch, uh, content, whether it's a webinar, video series, audio series, even just a series of blog posts that were written to kind of help um, educate and, and create awareness, right? If you think about all the things that we have to do as marketers to get someone who is unaware of our product to, you know, to the point where they're convinced that they want to try us or, or invest in us, that launch content in whatever format you currently have it in, being able to, to speak it and, and have that available in audio and to hear your brand voice makes a huge difference when it comes to conversions. The other thing we'll start to see in terms of delivery and fulfillment, so we have some, you know, sure you have courses, we have coaching programs, and that's kind of easy, easier to kind of think about in terms of podcasting content. We have folks that sell physical goods, whether it's a piece of art that has a story behind it, or uh, candles or meditation or room sprays, or, you know, those types of um, things that, that people offer, they started to put QR codes on their packaging. And they actually, in addition to selling the physical good, which a lot of folks that sell physical goods aren't necessarily able to start that conversation online 
online as much. Um, they've struggled with that historically. So now creating these private podcasts allow you to open that dialogue and creates essentially, you know, your podcast app becomes another inbox. It becomes kind of the audio inbox for folks to be able to connect with you. That's really fascinating stuff. Tons to unpack there. Um, so my next question is, um, how would a business go about starting a podcast and how does Hello Audio make this easier for uh, busy marketers who have a million and one things to do and now this is just another channel that they'll have to get into? How do you, how does Hello Audio make it easy? Oh, isn't that the truth? Every time we go to buy new tech, we're like, oh God, not another tech tool. Do I really need to add another tool to my tech stack? And and here's the thing, we designed it knowing that that's the case, right? Because we were, you know, Lindsay and Derek are business owners. I own my own business. So, you know, we came together and we knew that the product had to be easy to use. We don't like high, the ramp up time that, or the, you know, the learning curve that most tech products take. And so that was one of the biggest, one of the biggest, I would say, guiding principles of, of developing Hello Audio was that it needed to be easy to use and we needed time to value to be fast. Meaning we needed people to be able to launch their stuff quickly and not have a lot of tech headaches around it because we had already dealt with all of that from the CRMs and the landing page software and all the things like we just didn't, we don't, no one needs that. And so one of the things that I'm, we're actually really proud of is the stat that we have over 70% of our users that launch their first feed in less than 24 hours. And so, and usually the other 30% come and say, I just really didn't think it was that easy. And had I known, I would have done it right away. Like you can actually launch your first feed in, in less than five minutes because it is that easy to use. And, and here's what I would recommend for folks. You know, it's a little bit different when you think about starting a public podcast. What's my message going to be? What's my angle? How do I stand out in this, you know, sea of podcasts? How do I make sure that what I'm bringing to the table is relevant? You know, when you look at all the different types of content that you can turn into a private podcast and the three buckets that we just talked about, right? Marketing, delivery, fulfillment, and internal. All of a sudden, it kind of relieves some of that pressure of needing to, you know, be different or be neat because you already have invested in creating content more than likely. And if you haven't invested in creating content, audio is going to be the easiest way to do it. Because what do you need? You really, I mean, you could technically, you don't have to buy a fancy mic. You could probably buy a $12 lapel mic and sit in your car or sit in a closet, right? And be able to get pretty decent audio. But beyond that, you can think about, you know, being able to take what you already have. So maybe it's content blog posts that you you can read email. We have folks that are turning their email newsletters into podcasts because people don't want to sit and read their in your email or their inbox is crowded. So we have all of these companies using different ways to reach it. And it is actually really easy, especially if you have videos. What we've done at Hello Audio is that you can actually drag and drop videos and we strip out that audio for you automatically. So you don't have to go to like janky sites that are maybe shady, <laughs> you know, to get that audio converted. No one wants those. Don't do it. We do it for you automatically, you know, and, and honestly, even if you have written things that you want to speak, it allows you to bring your, your brand voice and, and your voice into it. So people get to know you and your brand and your company and what you stand for and the nuances, right? Sometimes when I talk, I get a little bit of mom energy kind of coming through, right? And so, but it's, it's interesting to let people connect and, and really engage with you in that way. So it can be really simple. You just have to decide what is the asset or what is the going to be the intention, just like any product you create, what's the intention of this product? Um, how can I, and then you know, what, what is the purpose? How is it going to move people further along in the conversation that I want to have with folks? And then it's really as simple as uploading media files and adding listeners. It, it literally can be done in minutes. I, I've been through your onboarding process and I, I can see it's, I, I think, and this is amazing, you can be up and running in five minutes and have a feed live in iTunes or in Google Podcasts or whatever podcasting platform. So for hats off to you and the engineering team and kind of in, in, in building that. Um, I guess a lot of people may, might be scared about, you know, um, the, the level of quality that maybe they feel is required, for example, in a public podcast and we have to get the music right and the intros and kind of all of these kinds of things, right? Um, are you saying there's a different standard or there's a different demand for that or or what advice would you give people to kind of to kind of make things polished 
um, and 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 represent their brand in a good way. It's true. I think the biggest thing for for me and for most consumers as they're listening is audio quality. So one of the things that we did with Hello Audio is we integrated with Dolby.io to have mastering directly or remastering of audio directly in the app. So that way, you know, if you were thinking about sending a message, you're the CEO, you're driving in your car, or maybe you're parked because that's safer, and you just want to send a message to all of your users, you're going to come out with something new. You have a new release and you, you know, you shoot off, you, you open up your voice recorder on your phone, you record it. Maybe there's a little bit of background noise. At the end of the day, you can eliminate a lot of those small types of nuances and, and, and really your consumers just want to hear from you, right? That's kind of the, the, the key of creating an exclusive private podcast is that it's exclusive. It's, it's not open to the general public. There's, it's a direct line of, of communication, you know, from you to your listener or to your prospect or to your client or to your consumer, whatever kind of depending on the phase or to your employee, depending on who you're talking to. And really, when it comes to that, it's it's not about being over engineered. It's just about being you. It's about being authentic and, and, and really being, you know, who you are and not people aren't necessarily expecting over, you know, overproduced or, um, you know, overly polished things. They just want to hear from you and they want the conversation to be relevant. It sounds like it takes the pressure off actually over investing and over engineering um because it's more personal now. It's true. It's, you know, it's interesting. We have users, we have thousands of users that use Hello Audio for t tons of different things. And it's, I mean, yes, we want audio. We don't want the crackling. We don't want distractions because that's really hard to listen to, but they don't need, they're not expecting the intro, the polished intro with the, you know, the deep voice and like their, you know, the radio voice. They just, they just want to hear from you. They want to hear they're interested in your product or they have purchased your product and now they want tips on how to consume it or how to use it. So, you know, this really does come down to just having a normal conversation with someone, just like if you met them in a coffee shop. Right. If you're looking, they, you met them in your local coffee shop and you're just having a conversation. That's what private podcasts allow you to do. They allow you to connect with folks in a much more intimate way that doesn't need to be over an overly produced show. It's just you and that listener having a conversation. Amazing. There's tons of great advice here. Um, but unfortunately, we are out of time for today. So we'd like to conclude with the last question that we ask all of our guests. And that is if our listeners come away from this episode with just one thing that they can begin to implement today to help them accelerate their business. What is that one thing? Oh, using private podcasts, for sure. It's it's easier than you might think. It's less expensive than you might think. And and the engagement that we've seen double digit, you know, increases in conversions, in engagement, um, in client success on the back end. Or if you run membership sites, we've seen reductions in churn. We've seen, you know, it's, it's unbelievable what private podcasts can do for your business, whether you're using them for marketing, whether you're using them for delivery or fulfillment, or just communicating with clients or, or your employees. Private podcasts are in, um, a, a, a completely, at this point in time, is the time of this recording, they're, a, they're absolutely overlooked in what they can do for your business. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Brendan, Nora, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Nora. That was Thanks great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Optily Radio, Accelerate E-Commerce Marketing. We're of course brought to you by Optily, the new Shopify app that's revolutionizing how store owners manage their ad spend across Facebook, Instagram, Google, and YouTube. If you're one of the millions who is struggling to know where to spend your marketing dollars for the most impact, try out Optily free for two weeks. Watch your returns increase, hours open up in your schedule, and achieve your business goals fast. Learn more at optily.com. We'll catch you back here next time on Optily Radio for more expert tips on growing your online store through marketing. Take care. Mm -hmm.